so there's a Brazilian monkey who's dancing in his head, and the real monk, there's a robot in Japan, and before the Brazilian monkey's own muscles say dance, the Japanese robot is already dancing. He's already stepping on the floor. And the practical North applications are endless. It's a North Carolina <laughs> monkey, though. <laughs> okay, it's a North Carolina, but he's probably got Brazilian orange juice. I know, yeah, I know what you're up to. Okay. He speaks Portuguese. So, uh, <laughs> I don't want you talking to Diane Kelly. Okay, All right. but I want to know, are there any limits? <laughs> no, okay. No, no, it's forbidden. That Brazil. came from Ellenthal, okay. Uh, are there any limits to uh, these kind of mental prosthetics? Oh, sure, there, there are limits, and there are many questions that need to be solved before they become uh, uh, feasible, you know. But looking like, forward, t five, ten years, do you see ultimate limits here? Oh, no, absolutely. The, we are trying to measure these limits. We have now monkeys controlling two virtual arms, controlling a whole body, right. and trying tasks that we normally find very difficult to do, and, uh, and they are learning, and they are using Miguel, this. how long before this becomes sort of commonplace, where these kind of mental prosthetics just don't become a big deal? Are yeah. we talking ten well, years? Yeah, no, I think in, in medicine, we'll see them first. Right. In the next five to ten years, we'll see prosthetics in many applications, but they will come out of medicine too. We already have applications that can use EEG to control, you know, apps on the yeah. uh, iPad. So kinematic data, it's a whole new data set that nobody's talking about. I saw it on one of your slides, kinematic data, literally data of motion and a dynamic universe between your ears. Those are real gifts, Miguel. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much to Thank share you. that with Thank us. You. Thank you. Okay.